Our introduction to trigonometry basically requires that we talk about the tr uh, three trig ratios. And the three basic trig ratios that we are going to learn are sine, cosine, and tangent, abbreviated like this. You can see on your calculator that you have the three trig buttons right here. These are the function buttons. Right Later on we'll learn how to use the inverse versions of those. But uh, These three things are basically what trigonometry uh, starts with. Right, Trigonometry in its, in its own right, if you break this word down, basically means the measure of triangles. So as we look at uh, a triangle, a right triangle particularly, we're going to learn. We're going to start with some right triangle trigonometry today. Uh, we want to really kind of focus on what these sides are, all right? And we'll start with the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, as you know, is the side that is the longest and is the side that is across from the 90 degree angle. All right. The other two sides are simply just called legs. And those two legs, that's, you know, depending on what reference angle we're looking at, sometimes will be we'll, what we'll refer to as the opposite side and sometimes as the adjacent side. All right. Uh, so let's see what the heck I'm talking about with all this stuff. All right. How does this kind of all fit together? Well, if we define sine, as a ratio, so let's let's really look at an angle. Let's use this as an angle. In trigonometry, you often use that Greek letter theta. So if we're looking at sine of theta, so we'll write the trig function sine as its abbreviated version sin. So sine of theta, right? We want to immediately attach an angle to that. That equals a fraction a ratio and the ratio is defined pretty easily as the opposite side so this is opposite divided by the hypotenuse so this is opposite over hypotenuse okay Next up is the cosine. The cosine of theta right, is a little bit different. Now instead of using the opposite, now we're going to use the adjacent. Adjacent is a fancy way of saying next to. So the cosine of an angle is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, and we'll get tons of practice with how these all fit together in real in uh, actual concrete examples. Last one is tangent. Tangent is the only one that's not going to use the hypotenuse. <clears throat> it's going to use opposite divided by adjacent. All right, so those are the uh, ratios that you want to memorize. <clears throat> and the best way to memorize those is to use the old trick that all your teachers know, SOH, CAH, TOA. All right, that, that mnemonic device is something that we can memorize <clears throat> pretty easily. And all your teachers probably teach it to you the same way. It's SOHCAHTOA. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. All right, where it basically boils down to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, that's the easiest way to memorize it, Sokotoa. All right, so let's see what this actually, what it actually means. Let's do some examples. 
All right, example one. <clears throat> Let's say in example one, we have theta up here, and we have, uh, put it in green, bright green, three inches, four inches, and five inches. And let's say the problem was asking you to write the sine of theta, write that ratio. Well, that's easy. In, in actual numbers now, we're going to go opposite over hypotenuse, 4 over 5. The cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, and keep in mind that if, if you are the adjacent, all right, cosine has actually two sides that are adjacent to it, or theta rather, has two sides that are adjacent to it, this one and this one. Those sides are both next to theta. But if you're the hypotenuse, you can't be anything else. Sorry, there's the bell. If you're the hypotenuse, you can't be anything else. Right? That's, hypotenuse is more powerful than anything other, uh, any other name that it might be. So the adjacent is over here. If you're the adjacent, then you're not the hypotenuse. All right, tangent of theta, oops, tangent of theta is the only one that can be a, an improper fraction. So the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, 4 over 3. All right, let's say that we wanted to change the angle and refer to this angle down here, alpha. So if we refer to the other angle, the other acute angle, sine of alpha is opposite. So now we're dealing with this one, 3 over 5. So now it's interesting because depending on what reference angle we're looking at, what acute angle we're looking at, will give us the perspective of opposite and adjacent. The hypotenuse isn't going to change, but now the adjacent of alpha is 4 over hypotenuse. The tangent of alpha is opposite over adjacent, 3 over 4. All right, so there's nice connections here. If we have sort of as a general rule, right, as a general rule, if we have the sine of an angle, all right, that is equal to the cosine of that angle's complement. And here's what I mean. The sine of, well, first of all, we would agree that, hopefully we would agree that, oops, we would agree that theta and alpha are complements of each other. They add up to 90, right? So if you look at it this way, watch this. The sine of theta, the sine of theta is equal to four over five. Well, the cosine of its complement is also four over five. There's a nice connection here. All right. Same thing goes for the cosine of theta. I'll put that in maybe a green. Cosine of theta is three fifths. The sine of alpha is the same. All right, so again, that rule is the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of that angle's complement. So, for example, if we have, if we are dealing with actual angle measures here, uh, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees because they're complements of each, of each other, 30 and 60. The sine of 5 degrees is equal to cosine of 85 degrees. All right, you see the point. You know, the sine of uh, 45 is equal to the cosine of 45. Right, and these all have applications to your calculator. So if you go to your calculator, right, and you make sure you're in degree mode, so you click on mode, and you go down here and make sure it's in degrees. So if you literally want to use some numbers, the sine of uh, 30 degrees is 0.5, right? The cosine of 60 should be the same. Let's see. Yeah. So the sine of 5 degrees isn't going to be such a nice fraction. It's going to be a crazy little decimal. All right, that should be equal to the cosine of 85. The reason because 5 and 85 are complements of each other, and it is. All right, and you can do that for, you can find the, the, uh, the trig 
uh, function value for you know all sorts of crazy stuff if you want to go to the tangent of six you can do that you know all sorts of stuff right but just always make sure that you're in uh, degree mode with that stuff alright now the um, the next thing we want to talk about is you know actually how to like find side lengths right we're going to use Sokotoa we're going to use that to actually find side length so you know let's try another one here let's see, let's just bring down this let's bring down this uh, this triangle here and we'll continue to use him so let's say this, we'll call this example two all right so let's say we have uh, an angle here that is 34 degrees right and let's say we have a side length here that is 13 inches and let's say that we wanted to find the hypotenuse All right, so we would have to think about which trig function to use sine cosine or tangent All right, and the answer to that is basically going to be on is, is going to be determined by what you're given All right. in relation to 34 degrees this is the opposite and this is the hypotenuse so you think about what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse and of course the answer to that is sine so you go sine of the angle is equal to 13 over we'll call that missing value x all right, so we have, let's see, a letter in the bottom. When we have that, we can kind of think about this as like a proportion, right? And we just kind of like cross multiply and all sorts of craziness, but let me just show you a shortcut. When your letter's in the bottom, switch it with this. Literally just switch those two around. So now your variable's on the left, your 13 stays up there, and your sine of 34 is right there. All right, and that's what you would put into your calculator. So you'd go, again, make sure you're in degree mode. You'd go 13 divided by the sine of 34. So that's the value of the hypotenuse, 23.248. 23.248. And we are in inches. So that is the hypotenuse right here. We call that x. All right, let's try another one. Example three. All right, this time we use some green here. Let's say we have 29 degrees and 52 centimeters and we want to know this value right down here that length from here to here All right what you would do is you would look at your angle that's given to you and you would see that we're looking for the adjacent so that's the one we're looking for we're given the hypotenuse so you want to think about which trig function notice I'm writing this Sokotoa every time I want to ingrain that into my brain to make sure that I remember that's my mnemonic device to remember sine cosine tangent so I think about which trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse well of course that's cosine so the cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse all right, this time we have a number in the bottom, so that's really easy. That just gets multiplied by the left-hand side. That's just kind of like clearing the denominator. Again, if you want to think of it as a proportion, you can, but cross-multiplication would do the same thing. But All right, let's learn some shortcuts here. We have a denominator of a number. Just bring it up and multiply it right here. All right. So in your calculator, you go 52 cosine 29. You press enter 45.48 centimeters 
0.48 centimeters. Now, if you put that in a different way, if you put the cosine first and you put 29 times 52, you're going to get the wrong answer. All right, because we didn't close the parenthesis right here. So when you put your angle in, you have to close the parenthesis and then put your 50 times 52. All right, to avoid that silliness, just put your 52 first. You don't even need a multiplication symbol, cosine 29, and then you don't have to close the parentheses. So, you know, you do enough, if you have a worksheet with 50 problems on it and half of them are this style, you know, over that time, you might save yourself a couple minutes. So just learning some of the easier ways to type things is, is kind of helpful. Okay, so that's how we use cosine there. Uh, number four. Let me draw a different triangle this time. So let's say we have notice all these are right triangles. So let's say we have something like this and we have uh, 14 feet, 20 feet and this angle right here is 52 degrees. All right, in a triangle like this, well, I guess I probably gave too much information. If I wanted to find this, I would just use Pythagorean theorem. All right, and if I wanted to find this angle, I would just subtract 52 from 90. All right, but I kind of gave too much info. So let's get rid of this, and let's try to find it. I'll call it W. All right, so even though the triangle is kind of spun around, right, we still want to remember our Sokotoa. And we have 52. This is opposite of 52. And this one is adjacent to 52. So this is the only trig function that we're not using the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, as you know, is across from the 90. So which trig function do we not use the hypotenuse? That, of course, is a tangent. So you go tangent of the angle equals w over 14. Numbers in the bottom, so you just take 14 tangent 52, and you get w. So 14 tangent 52, and you get 17.919. And we want to make sure we put a label on that. I think we're talking about feet here. Yeah, feet. So we're done. Okay. So those are the basics of, of trig, right? There's a lot more to it, right, with uh, unit circles and all sorts of stuff. But for right now, you know, I think we got the basics down uh, with sine, cosine, tangent. And this is really the key mnemonic device that you want to memorize. Uh, anytime you're asked for like a trig ratio, trig value, uh, make sure your, your fractions are always simplified. These are right now, but if you had like 40 over 50, you would want to simplify that down to its, its simplest form. All right, and then we went on here, talked about a little shortcut here with the connection between sine and cosine, and then we found a couple of missing lengths. So I hope that video helped. In the next one, we're going to we're going to really kind of dive a little bit deeper into uh, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, and, and learn how to find angles in right triangles. Uh, after that, we'll learn more about, we'll learn about the law of sines, law of cosines, and try to find angles and sides when, when the triangle isn't right. All right those, those laws uh, pertain to oblique triangles, and then we'll wrap it up with a study of Heron's formula, which is a way to find area of any triangle.